Good evening and welcome to today on this Wednesday night. A wonderfully calm, meditative, contemplative service modeled after the Tizay community in France. Something designed to help us get over the hump, to be able to take some time to reflect, to receive, and to just be. To be known as beloved children of God, be known as someone worth the life of the Son of God, someone who is graced beyond measure and then called to share that grace. And so as we continue our time together, thought for reflection in this evening from Martin Luther King Jr. Rarely do we find people who willingly engage in hard, solid thinking. There's an almost universal quest for easy answers and half-baked solutions. Nothing pains some people more than having to think. Bless the Lord, my soul. And bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, who leads me into life. Bless the Lord, my soul. attributed to St. John Chrysostom. O Lord, accept me in penitence. O Lord, lead me not. O Lord, lead me not into temptation. O Lord, grant me good thoughts. O Lord, grant me tears and remembrance of death and compunction. O Lord, grant me the thought of confessing my sins. O Lord, grant me humility chastity, and obedience. O Lord, grant me patience, courage, and meekness. O Lord, plant in me the root of all blessings, the fear of you in my heart. O Lord, grant me to love you with all my mind and soul, and always to do your will. O Lord, protect me from certain people, and demons, and passions, and from every other harmful thing, O oh Lord, you know that you act as you will. May your will be also in me, a sinner, 
for blessed are you forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Their days are like a passing shadow. Follow your heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains so that they smoke. Make the lightning flash and scatter them. Send out your arrows and rout them. Stretch out your hand from on high. Set me free and rescue me from the mighty waters. Gloria, 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 Patri et Filio. Gloria, 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 Spiritui Sancto. Gloria, 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 Patri et Filio. Gloria, 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 Spiritui Sancto. Gloria, 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 Patri et Filio. Gloria, 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 Spiritui Sancto. from the Gospel of Matthew. The disciple is not above the teacher nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beazabal, how much more will they malign those of this household? So have no fear of them for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered and nothing secret that will not become known. But I say to you in the dark, tell in the light what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one known household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Sing to the Lord, O oh my being. Let 
Let everything in me proclaim God's salvation. Sing to the Lord, O oh my being, and remember all of God's marvelous deeds. Sing to the Lord, O oh my being. Let everything in me proclaim God's salvation. Sing to the Lord, O oh my being, and remember all of God's marvelous deeds. Sing to the Lord, O oh my being. Let everything in me proclaim God's salvation. Sing to the Lord, O oh my being. And remember all of God's marvelous deeds. The first commandment says that we are not to have any other gods before. Now that seems like plain common sense. Of course, God is God. Everything else is not. And so that just seems to be a real kind of simple, easy way to enter into the commandment. God is God. There we go. But then think of all of the things that you place before God. Think of all of the things that you think of first before God. And it can be done in any number of ways. As Luther says in the small catechism, that which you fear, love, or trust more than God, that is your God. So what makes you afraid? What do you trust? What do you love? Think about that, and then think about what Jesus was just saying. What would you do if your own family said don't? What would you do if your own country said don't? Or your political party? Or your sense of right and wrong? Your opinion, your sense of place or comfort. If you're more worried about being put out than what you do, well, then your comfort is your God. If you're more worried about, you know, if you're more focused on the, in the fact that you're darn sure your opinion is the end all and be all of all facts, well, there is your God. If the way you will treat the rest of the world is entirely shaped upon your background, your belief system that is shaped by economics or politics, or family upbringing even. And it runs contrary to God. That is your God. But have any of you ever tried to change something? 
Have you ever had to deal with a family dynamic that needed to change because it was unhealthy? How'd that work out for you? How often does it pick one against another? Even if it's something terrible and horrible, some family secret that is causing pain and anguish. Or a particular practice, a personal practice, a political practice, a whatever, a habit that is not healthy. How often does that end up pitting person against person? That is your God. That which you fear, love, or trust more than God, there's your God. The sad fact is, more often than not, we create God in our own image. God, granted, is nicer and friendlier and probably a little more gracious than we are. But more often than not, God likes what we like and hates what we hate and in general approves of us and disproves of those that we disprove of. And what does that do to your relationship with God and your relationship with that other person? Because even though Jesus said, I came not to him to bring peace, but the sword, and he talks about all this division, we need to remember that his most fervent prayer at the end of his long table grace talk in the Gospel of John speaks very powerfully of his deepest desires for us to all be one. Not uniformity, but unity. And that the entire movement of Christ's work in the world was about reconciliation, redemption, reconnection, a restart to the way things were. But it was a restart to the way things were by reconnecting first and foremost with God's will. And most powerfully, Jesus expressed that in the cross. Now, no, it is not God's will for death. That's our side of the coin. We are more than happy to kill. We're more than happy to use fear, to manipulate, to hold people in check. We're more than happy to harm. What Jesus did on the cross was he did something completely and totally selfless for others. He didn't go to the cross for himself. He went to the cross for you, for me, for this world. He went to the cross for the people you like and the people you hate. He went to the cross for those Romans and the Pharisees, and as his disciples who ditched him, and for the people who taunted and mocked him. He served, but not just because this was a, hey, look at me. But he served because he loved. He understood that what was needed for the world was for something different to be done. To show us that our ways of division and death and fear and coercion and oppression are idols, they're empty. He took up a cross to show us that the absolute worst we can do will not stop God. And for us, the question remains then, will we take up that cross 
and follow, even if it means others will look at you funny because you love people they hate and you ought to hate them too. That you will serve people that others think don't deserve anything. And you ought to not give them anything either. To seek peace. When people cry for war. To care when people want to just give up. To love when hate seems so easy. To hope even in the face of fear. Brothers and sisters, Jesus took the cross and died on that cross to show us the outcome of those particular beliefs when it comes to fear and hatred and oppression and violence. But he didn't stay dead because the final word from God is life. And so in his service on the cross, that selfless act he did for you and for me and for this entire world, he showed what it meant to give. He showed what it meant to serve. He showed what it meant to love beyond that which even families often practice. And as he rose again from the dead, he restored to us the promise of the new thing that God is continually creating, that gift of new life, that gift of another day, another chance, that gift of grace. And so how may we use that? In this world, how will we respond? Will we take up a cross and follow and acknowledge Jesus? Or will we seek our own comfort, safety, security, place, power, whatever it may be? What will be your God? Choose. And know that grace is always with you. And that Jesus took the cross for you. No matter what. To show you what God is really all about. And remember that God loves you. And so do I. Amen. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Glory be to you, Lord, glory be to you. to you, Lord. Alleluia. 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 I invite you to join with me in the words of the prayer that our Savior taught us. In whichever form you wish to do, I will simply be using the form and the translation of the Taze community. Our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Keep us from temptation and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. In God alone my soul can find rest and peace. In God my peace and joy. Only in God my soul can find its rest. Find its rest and peace. In God alone my soul can find rest and peace. In God my peace and joy. Only in God my soul can find its rest. Find its rest and peace. In God alone my soul can find rest and peace. In God my peace and joy. Only in God my soul can find its rest. Find its rest and As we come to the close of our gathering time this evening, we do not necessarily depart a place where we were all in one space, but we do leave this space that was created. But importantly, any time we come towards the end of worship, the question remains, when you head out into the world, when you go back to the rest of the world, the quote unquote real world, what will you take with you? What will you do differently? And so I send you forth with this benediction. Go into God's world filled with the spark of the Holy Spirit. Let love guide your actions. Listen to the spirit of truth. Spread the peace of Christ and remind everyone you meet that each one is a beloved child of God. Amen. Oh God, keep me safe. For I trust in you. The pathway to life you teach me, with you is peace and joy in all fullness. O oh God, keep me safe, for I trust in you. The pathway to life you teach me, with you is peace and joy in all fullness. O oh God, keep me safe, for I trust in you. The 